You know, when it comes to hunting, for me, I have to say that mule deer are the pinnacle of it. From the country that they inhabit to the time of year that you're hunting them, ever since I was a young man, I found myself drawn up into their habitat to pursue them year after year. And, you know, over the years, I haven't always killed the biggest bucks, but I can say with honesty that they have been the very best days of my life. And there's something to be said for that because it's not about the size of the animal, as my brother always says, it's the size of the experience. And this experience that you have when you're hunting them, it's what keeps you coming back. And as the years grind on and as the experience builds, you find yourself more and more successful. And for me, this hunt was all about all of that experience coming together, culminating in one of the most incredible clutch plays that has ever happened in my hunting career. Over the years, one thing that I've found that really determines how successful you are consistently is recognizing why you were successful in the past. Uh, I think a lot of us attribute success to luck, to just a, a random situation. But the reality is, even though those things exist, uh, most of the time, if you were successful, there's a reason why. And as you explore that and dig it up and really grab a hold of why you were successful, all of a sudden you, you begin to be able to implement these different areas and ways that you were successful on certain hunts. And one of the things that I've found over the years is that mule deer and especially good mule deer bucks aren't all over the place. Uh, mule deer tend to congregate and inhabit very specific small areas on a mountain, whether that's a, a single little ridge um, or a draw or a little portion of a burn, you will notice that 90% of the time these deer are in the same spots. And as you begin to realize that about a spot, what happens is instead of looking all over, you can begin to focus your time and energy in smaller areas. And that's exactly what we did on this hunt. It actually started way earlier in the year. My wife and I had gone down uh, in elk season and I spent some time looking for mule deer and taking inventory on what was there and churned up these two tremendous bucks. And I was blown away when I saw this big one in the front, but he had a busted off back fork. So I decided to take a closer look at his buddy here. And this buck really was an impressive deer. Deep forks, he got a little bit of trash. And so when I found that I had an extra day after our elk hunt, I decided that I was gonna go in and spend some time knowing where these deer were and see if I could churn them up in a single day hunt. And this is the result of it. With only one day to potentially make this happen, we knew that we needed to capitalize on every second of daylight. So we got up at 3 a.m. and started riding the six miles into the burn so that we'd have the best chance possible of turning this deer up. here about 20 30 minutes ahead of schedule so we're cooking some breakfast the burn is just right around the corner where maddie shot her buck last year so we're gonna go in here and hunt hard all day we got up super early it's gonna be just a good full day clear the wind died down it's gonna be beautiful but first we gotta eat There's very few things I love as much as that moment when it starts getting light and you have the whole day ahead of you and all the hope and anticipation of what could happen during the day. A couple of years ago when I was hunting in Alaska, I had a muzzle blast go off right by my ear 
and it has pretty much destroyed my hearing. My ears are so sensitive now, they ring all the time. And so whenever you see me walking around wearing earmuffs like this, that means that for some reason, I believe that there's gonna be some action and it could happen at absolutely any moment. And I truly believe that about this spot. I knew that there was deer there and that it could happen. And as soon as we got on out on this ridge where we could see, we started churning up deer after deer and we knew it was gonna be an awesome morning. It didn't take long once we started poking around in this draw to find some deer. We were finding them down in the Cyanothus and over on another ridge, but we hadn't turned any bucks up yet, so we decided to keep moving and slowly picking apart everything, looking for these ghosts. I think it's a buck. It looks like one. I don't see any horns on its head. Crazy. Okay, it turned. It's looking, looking that way now. Probably another one right by there. You know, historically for me, this is a draw that I have seen a lot of good deer in. Not only did I see these bucks earlier in the season, this is actually the very same draw that Madeline had killed her really nice buck in the year before. And over the years, uh, I've noticed that the deer seem to congregate, especially the big bucks seem to congregate in this little basin here, and it consistently produces them. And so when it's only a day to hunt, I knew this was a spot that I had to take a look at. We were taking our time just picking everything apart. And as we walked through this draw, all of a sudden Colton looked up behind us and caught a glimpse of a big mule deer buck working his way up the hill. I knew right away when I saw this deer, if I was gonna have a shot opportunity, it wasn't gonna be much of one. And so I was locked onto this thing, ready to take the first shot I had. I don't got a good shot. Hold on, he's gonna walk to the right. No, he's going left. Oh, I see him. Far left. Call him. Dumped him. Dumped him. Oh. Oh. That thing's a take. Huge, huge buck. Huge. Huge. Oh my gosh. Oh. <sighs> I just looked up and saw a white buck. Oh my gosh. Oh my huge. gosh. Huge buck. Huge. Let's watch him make sure he's huge. Not he's he's down. I'm. I just watched him kick. Oh. I don't <laughs> know how far he was. I held that far above his back and shot. That was beautiful. You dumped him. What in the heck? Holy smokes, I looked up there. <laughs> what? <laughs> what just happened? <laughs> Look at that, the sun is oh just kissing the sky right there. Oh. Dude, that was as clutch as a <sighs> there. Oh my goodness. Oh my gosh. That's a that, ways up there. That was a long ways up. Dude, do you see what I'm shooting through? I know. <laughs> I didn't think you When you said call him, I was just like, okay. I was looking through the camera, watching where he was stepping, and I was like, meh. Try to time it perfectly. You were gone. They knew something was wrong. Yeah. Three does and a masher. Masher back. Let's see the video real quick. Oh my goodness. Holy smokes. <laughs> Jared, what just happened? <laughs> Dude, we haven't even started hunting. Oh we literally gosh. walked into the first burn. Look at the advantage of three eyes though. I would have walked right by that butt. So as soon as you set, you pulled your binos, I just looked up and was like, oh yeah. Yeah, I saw I that saw white butt and I was game over. And then I oh saw four gosh. white butts and I was like, oh yeah. <laughs> but what, he was with does. Yeah. That was weird. I was expecting to see other bucks because I was like, I need to make sure I shoot the right butt. Yeah, I know. Butterball. I know. The Biscuit. Sucker. Dude, the sucker sees He was like the like size a of a cow elk. Elk. He looks like a yeah, Pillsbury a doe. Oh my gosh. Now we gotta go. And I got... How far up there is that? He's like 400. I've five. got to range that. He's a long ways. Still wearing his puffies. I think I'm gonna need to strip down to hike up that hill. Yeah. It's gonna get hot in the sun. Oh my goodness. I got my camera out and videoed you just shooting. Nuh-uh. Yeah, I just had it on you the whole time. I didn't even know what was going on. I was just videoing you. Oh my gosh. 
Yeah, I'm gonna strip down. That's insane. Dude, what just happened? <laughs> <laughs> That's crazy. Dude, I kind of half expected it, but I didn't. You never want to like over anticipate something because you always get let yeah. down. And then, but you were pretty confident in this spot. I knew this. You kept saying this was the spot. You said we're gonna see a buck in that burn. Oh, we haven't even gotten to where I usually see all, like the majority of the deer. Wow, that was crazy. And I got sun in our eyes, so I couldn't cross there. Man, this is crazy. that was wild. Oh, that was wild. Really good. I, got, that much. I got a bunch of video. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. He looks so good. Beautiful cave. Great deer. Oh my goodness. Yeah. Two stickers on the right. Yeah, he's just a good solid deer, isn't he? He's so but, nice. That's what it'll be. Oh, really? Look at that. Just wow. a good deer. Really good deer. Look how heavy he is. Oh my god. Look at that deer, Colton. <laughs> I'm looking. <laughs> really good buck. Super heavy. That's a good, I gotta say get right so That's there. the buck you saw at the Brokoff buck. I think so. It's a good velvet. Oh my goodness. Yeah. Yeah, I'm happy with that deer. Wow, that's a nice buck. Wow, he's got two points sticking out here. Oh, he's just so good. He's just... Yeah, really good buck. Just really good That's a really solid deer, deer. Oh, crazy. Oh. Yeah. You can't even, you can't even describe days like today. Like we were coming up here and the moon was just so bright. You could see your shadow on the ground when you were riding the horses and you're coming up, it's just crystal clear and stars and you get up top and you know you're right in them. Like I've been in this burn so many times and hunted these deer and you know you're right on top of the deer and you got everything in your advantage and the weather's just perfect. And I, I can't even, I don't even think I could put into words how much mule deer hunting means to me. Like I just enjoy it thoroughly. It just fills up my soul. And I can't, like I literally can't imagine life without mule deer hunting, everything. I mean, just sitting here around the deer right now, everything from the hunt to the sitting here with the deer to the packing it out to the eating it, like everything about it is just incredible. And there's those things that happen to us in life and those things that we love that like we can't even imagine our life without. And I think about this a lot. Like you can go without a lot of things in life, but it doesn't make life more enjoyable to go without them. Um, you can tough things out. And like there's that old there's that old saying, you know, you can go three minutes without air. You can go three days without water. You can go three weeks without food. And yeah, we can go three days without water, but who the heck wants to go three days without water? Like, have you ever gone a day without water? It's absolutely miserable. Like we've been hunting this high country here where there's no creeks and we're melting snow and we're just not getting enough water. You get dehydrated and you get cranky and you just, it's no good. And that reality that you can go without something, but you're gonna die without it eventually. And between the time that you stop doing it or you don't even have any interaction with it and then you die, you're miserable in between. So yeah, you can go three days without water, but between the time that you die and the time that you stop drinking water, you're miserable. And the same is true with, that, with Jesus. What, what's interesting, get this, as people, we rely on things outside of us to sustain us. Think about it just for a moment. Like you, you willingly acknowledge this and, and you humble yourself to this all the time. Every time you open your mouth to eat, every time you open your mouth to drink water, you're acknowledging, you're admitting you're submitting to the fact that you need something that you don't have to keep you alive. And the same is true with Jesus. Like, you can go three days without water. You can go three weeks without food. You can go your entire life without Jesus. But I'm telling you right now, when you die, you can't afford to die without Jesus. Look, if, if dead to God you live, when you die, you will not live with God. 
You see, because in God's presence is fullness of joy. David says it in Psalm 16, 11. I know I beat it into the ground, but it's the truth. In God's presence is fullness of joy. And so if, if you want nothing to do with God on earth, if you say, I can just tough it out, I can make it through these 70, 80, 90 years, I don't need him, then when you die, you won't live with God. But if we live for God, we live with God eternally. And here's the reality. You can live without Jesus your whole life. You can not go mule deer hunting your whole life. But why on earth would you ever want to do that? Like you're missing out on the best things in life because in God's presence is fullness of joy. Like God has everything that you're ever pursuing. It's him that you're actually pursuing and we pursue everything but him trying to find it. It's crazy. And so I want to challenge you today. Jesus says this. He says, you have to eat my flesh and drink my blood. Metaphorically, what he's saying is the same thing as drinking water, eating food. What he's saying is you have to acknowledge, you have to submit to the fact, you have to accept the fact, you have to partake of Jesus. You need to accept Jesus into you. Just like you have to accept water to stay alive more than three days, just like you have to accept food to stay alive more than three weeks, you have to accept Jesus to stay alive eternally. Look, I know that that can be a lot. That can be a huge monumental thing. But here's, here's what I want to ask you. I want to challenge you today. I, wanna, I want you to imagine the thing that you love the most and imagine never getting to do that again for the rest of your life. Imagine that just for a second. I don't know what it is. Maybe you love whitetail hunting. Maybe you love mule deer hunting, elk hunting, moose hunting. Maybe you love fishing. I don't know what it is that you love. But imagine if you were told you can never do that the rest of your life. Now I want you to imagine this. Imagine that eternity is real. Imagine that eternity is real and, and when you die, you come to this place and you have to live with the decisions that you've made here and you're told that the rest of your eternity, you can't enjoy anything again. That's a terrifying thought, but it doesn't have to be that way. Like it doesn't have to be that way. Jesus is right here. He wants a relationship with you. Look, all you have to do is put your faith in Jesus. He came, he died to pay for your sins. He went to the cross, he died to pay for your sins. He didn't stay dead. He rose from the dead, defeating death, the thing that we all have to face and that we can't defeat in our own power. He defeated death so that we could have a relationship with him. And all you have to do is put your faith in him and follow him the rest of your life. Look, we believe that Jesus is real and he's worth following. And that's why we talk about him so much. And we can't imagine our life without mule deer hunting. We cannot imagine our life without Jesus. And I'm telling you right now, the best thing you can ever do and the one decision that you will make that you will never regret is putting your faith in Jesus Christ. If you wanna put your faith in Jesus Christ or maybe you've walked away from the Lord and you need to rekindle your walk with the Lord, we invite you to go over to limitlesshunting.com and ask for a copy. We wrote this resource called The First Mile. It teaches you everything you need to know about walking with Jesus, how to walk with Jesus, what it means to walk with Jesus, what God, how to figure out what God has for you in this life. And we wanna help you figure that out. It's absolutely free. We pay for the shipping and everything. We wanna send it to you so that you can learn what you've been missing, what you've been going without. Because just like water and food and air, you need Jesus. And without him, your life is nothing compared to what it could be. See that? You know, one thing that has changed significantly in me over the years is when I thought about hunting and deer hunting, uh, my mind just really focused in on the harvest itself, uh, that moment when you pull the trigger, when it all comes together, kind of that climax. But for me now, I am beginning to just really love the process after the harvest, the working up of the animal, the just sitting there and enjoying it, uh, the bagging of the meat, thinking about what I'm going to make out of the meat. Uh, and the pack out, you know, the pack out presents its own challenges. Uh, and, but there's also this just this feeling of deep success when you have that pack out come in. So I think that's one of the things that happens as you spend more time doing anything is that you gain this respect for the entire process uh, and you develop a deep love for the entire process. And you start kind of honing those areas that uh, maybe you weren't so fond of before or so good at before. And there's a lot to learn in the rest of it, besides just the harvest of the animal, the taking care of it and how you use it to feed your family and others. And so that's become one thing that I've really begun to enjoy about hunting mule deer that I didn't used to.
you guys hear the shot? Did you hear the shot? Oh yeah. Oh man. Oh, it looks so heavy. It's crazy. Oh man. Hmm. I'm glad they're carrying it the rest of the way. Right? I just want to take a second and thank you all for watching and I truly hope that you enjoyed this hunt as much as we enjoyed putting it together. Look, if you want to know more about Limitless Outdoors and keep up to date with everything going on, you can go over and you can follow us on social media on Facebook or Instagram. You can subscribe to our YouTube channel and turn on the notifications so you can watch the videos there. And also, if you want to become a member of our exclusive community over on Patreon, you can go over to patreon.com slash Limitless Outdoors. What you'll get there is you're going to have early access to our videos. You're going to have access to what we call our success series, which are tips and tactics for success uh, in a wide variety of hunting situations, whether it's mule deer, moose, elk, all over. And you're going to have you're going to have intimate insight and access to what is going on at Limitless Outdoors. So we encourage you if you want to become part of our community and and be a part of what God is doing through Limitless Outdoors, go over to patreon.com slash Limitless Outdoors. We hope that you have an awesome week and that you'll join us next time. God bless you all and have a great day.